As pre-production devices continue to be built, and as the printalizer densitometer is getting closer and closer to production, I'd like to talk about some of the product testing that has been going on. This may seem like a bit of silly nitpicking, but if you dig into the specifications of many products, they list a temperature range in which they are supposed to work as expected. Furthermore, temperature variations can and do affect the behavior of various sensors. Therefore, even though the printalizer densitometer is designed to be used under what you'd call normal room temperature conditions, I decided it was important to actually test its limits. Lacking a fancy environmental test chamber, I decided to devise a simple and repeatable thermal cycle test routine. This allowed me to test various sensor settings and target densities across a similar range of environmental conditions. The process I developed used a freezer to cool the device down to below zero degrees Celsius, then used a 3D printer filament dryer to subsequently heat the device up to above 45 degrees Celsius. Putting these two together and normalizing the data across all runs, I was able to collect a lot of information on the device's thermal performance. To compare the data, I normalized the readings around whatever point read as 25 degrees Celsius on the microcontroller's internal temperature sensor. Since I was testing across a changing temperature profile, and since the microcontroller was on the opposite side of the circuit board from the light sensor, this value could not be taken without some wiggle room. However, it was repeatable enough for the sake of comparison. In any case, what I found was that the device actually held up pretty well. In all but the highest transmission densities, the variation all the way from 0 to 40 degrees Celsius was within an acceptable plus or minus 0.01 density range. Just to be safe, I've decided to put 10 to 30 degrees Celsius as the device's temperature specification. I'm also going to add a footnote about the best results being around plus or minus 5 degrees Celsius from the calibration temperature. However, it looks like this is not something I need to be overly concerned about. While this testing was relatively tedious and took the better part of a week, I'm glad I did it. I collected a lot of good data on sensor performance throughout the process and learned a lot about how the various sensor channels handle temperature variation. One major milestone the printalizer densitometer had to pass before it could go to market is something called electromagnetic compatibility testing or EMC testing. This is something that most electronic devices have to pass before they can be sold. If you look at many product labels and some of the fine print in product documentation, you'll likely see logos and language discussing this. For the US, this often means an FCC logo and a statement about part 15 of the FCC rules. For Europe, this often means a CE logo and a statement known as a declaration of conformity. But what do these mean? Well, they basically mean that a device won't generate any undesirable radio waves and that a device won't malfunction in the presence of undesirable radio waves from an external source. You may not realize it, but most modern electronic devices actually have this as a real concern. To verify all of this, there are specialized test labs with all the necessary equipment and know-how. There were two configurations that had to be tested to make sure the printalizer densitometer was compliant with the regulations. First, the device as a standalone unit connected to power via a simple USB power adapter. And second, the device as a computer peripheral connected to and controlled via that, uh, that computer's USB port. All the tests we conducted covered both configurations, some together and some separately. I spent about two and a half days at one of these labs running through all the tests. The list of tests that we conducted included radiated emissions, 
which is pointing a big antenna at the device and measuring any emissions it may be generating. Conducted emissions, tapping the power input and measuring any emissions the device may be sending out its power plug. High frequency radiated emissions. This was really just a test that the laptop wasn't misbehaving, but it was still a test that we needed to do. Radiated immunity. Pointing a big antenna at the device, bombarding it with radio waves, and making sure it does not malfunction. This was actually the most tedious of all the tests because we had to run a full sweep across three different frequency ranges, two different antenna orientations, and four different device orientations for a total of 24 separate test runs. That ended up spanning nearly a full day of the testing process. A day when I was doing little more than sitting in an adjacent room and watching monitors and logs, hoping nothing went wrong. Conducted immunity. Injecting noise into the power input and making sure the device does not malfunction. Transient burst. Simulating various odd behaviors on the power input such as skipped AC cycles and over-under voltage conditions and making sure the device does not malfunction. Electrostatic discharge. Pointing an ESD discharge gun at the device, attempting to shock it with high voltage sparks and making sure it does not malfunction. And finally, harmonics and flicker. This was yet more measurements on the power input to make sure it does not have any undesirable behavior there. So what are the takeaways from this experience? Most of the information you find online about EMC compliance only seems to go as far as radiated and conducted emissions portion of the testing. This actually ended up only taking about a fifth of the lab time. Also, a substantial portion of the tests seemed to be focused more on the off-the-shelf equipment that was used for the test setup than on my actual device. Thankfully, Lenovo, the maker of the test laptop, and CUI, the maker of the USB power adapter, know what they're doing when designing power supplies. Now that all this testing is out of the way, it's finally time to prepare the first round of pre-production devices for evaluation by a select group of test users. I just need to update the labeling and documentation, prepare the included materials, package everything, and get them sent out. Until later, bye!